We Chats with Brilliant People, hosted by Allison Rodes. Hi everyone, welcome back to We Chats with Brilliant People. Today I am talking to Roger Draper, who is the CEO of the Lawn Tennis Association, so basically the head of British tennis, I, I would that's how I'm going to put yeah, it. Running Is that British all right tennis. with you? Running That's British right. tennis. Fantastic. Uh, in full disclosure, uh, Roger and I have played tennis together. <laughs> Long time ago. <laughs> Long time ago. He was far better than I was. Um, and we actually went to college together. We did, yeah. we did. So we were just reminiscing about what that was like. So I wanted to just get um, a feel from you about what, what's a typical day for you. Well, there isn't really a typical day in British tennis um, because you cover so many different areas. So, yeah. you know, on Monday I was down with uh, um, with a load of school teachers in a in a school in Tower Hamlets where ninety percent of the kids were Bangladeshi, yeah. and the challenges of getting kids playing tennis. To last night on the board of Wimbledon uh, with people like Tim Henman and Mervyn King, the governor of the Bank of England, talked about prize money and master planning through twenty twenty. Um, obviously heavily involved in the Olympics mm -hmm. so you know you could be dealing with kids parents the media um, Prime Minister government so it, it's it you know it's a fantastic job but yeah. it's, it's very challenging in that there's no there's no sort of set uh, set day so our jobs to grow the sport and we do that through local community projects through our major events obviously dealing with performance players like Andy Murray and Laura Robson and people yeah. like that. So um, no, it's 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 a challenging job, but it's it's a great job to have. Sounds pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I think anyone who works in sport is very privileged, and something you know, I'm passionate about sport, and I'm passionate about yeah. business and change. So you know, to be involved in the business of sport, you yeah. know, at the LTA, we're a multi-million pound business. So um, you know, we run it like a business. We have non-executive directors and. You know, it's it's fantastic for me because you get to meet some brilliant people. Oh, fantastic! Thank you for that segue. Um, so I wanted to know what kinds of things do you do to prepare yourself for this job? You know, like you say, it's a multi-million pound industry. Um, what do, what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis to prepare yourself? You know, because I'm I'm thinking about the mental side of mm -hmm. preparation. So, what what kind of things do you do to prepare yourself for some big event let's say or, or you know if you have to make a presentation to important people well it's interesting because a lot of the sort of principles of, of a tennis player you know mental physical technical technical are very, very similar to sort of being chief executive so yeah. you know in a challenging realm like mine you've got to keep your energy levels high you've got to be you know physically um you know got to be in in, in decent shape but i think i think mentally I think the key thing is I do a lot of visualisation. Mm. So I will, just as I used to do when I played tennis or rugby, you would visualise, you'd shut your eyes and you think, well, what's it going to be like standing up doing that presentation to mm -hmm. the Olympic Committee? And a lot of people say to me, oh, you're a very good communicator and so on, and how do you do it without notes? But what they don't see is probably the week before uh, me up at four o'clock in the morning with a whole raft of notes and yeah. I just keep drilling it down and drilling it down. Mm -hmm. And I'll always make sure uh, that, you know, if I'm presenting in front of a bit, I'll, I'll always have a quiet moment where I'll go into the auditorium when nobody's there and I'll just picture and visualise what it's going to be like standing in front of, of those people as well. And I think, you know, some of the training I've had from sport has really helped me in business as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember playing my first sort of rugby game in front of a big crowd. I remember the preparation we had was actually headphones on, walking through with crowd noises. So actually when you did it, yeah. you're in a comfortable environment and it's interesting we're doing a lot of work um, from the Olympic point of view with all the British athletes at the moment about preparing them for dealing with all the things they're going to have to deal with with the home crowd mm. um, and all the challenges that come with that as well so a lot of visualisation um, a lot of preparation and a, a lot of attention to detail so often people see the outputs of what you do but what they don't often see behind the scene is as I say the attention to detail and the preparation. So when you say visualization, what what exactly does that mean to you? You know, I c I could put my interpretation of it, but when do you sit yourself down and, and make yourself go through it? Uh, can you be doing it as you're walking around, where, uh, as you're in the car? What what does visualization mean to you? 
Well, it's interesting. I mean, it, it means a number of things. One, one of the big things we had to change here in tennis was they were so used to sort of losing in a negative culture that we talk constantly about winning. And I talked to them about, I've been lucky enough to be in Trafalgar Square when we won the Rugby World Cup and the Cricket World Cup. Mm. And, and I said to them, you know, all the team here, we're going to be in Trafalgar Square one day. And, you know, for me, I've experienced what Trafalgar Square is like with a million people. It's quite, but for a lot of people, they haven't experienced it. Right. So it's just sort of closing your eyes and imagining what it's going to be like when we are successful and we have Wimbledon champions, we are going to be in Trafalgar Square. And that's yeah. quite a moment as well. But, but also... I think having your, your downtime where, you know, so I, I go off for a run in Richmond Park mm -hmm. and I put my iPod on, listen to music, but as I'm going round, I'm actually doing a lot of my thinking and my visualisation about what it's going to be like yeah. to, you know, whether it's present or go into a board meeting or do some tough negotiation or whatever. So I think if you can actually, you know, if you could put yourself into that sort of vision and then row back yeah. and then do the preparation and the detailed planning and then obviously it's then about execution but I find it's you I'm a lot more comfortable having pictured myself in there because actually when I am in the thick of it I, I actually feel a lot more comfortable I'm not as nervous and when you visualize is it um, you seeing yourself or you feeling yourself doing it or combination I think it's a combination of, of things. I mean, nothing ever really prepares you for because things always go wrong, or yeah. and particularly if you're doing the presentation, technology fails and yeah. so on. But I think it's actually being able to deal with all of those situations. Yeah. And as I say, uh, in business life, I've certainly been helped with my sports background as well because whether you're playing a tennis match or a rugby match, um, you're in those pressurised situations, and it is about. Um, you know, to, to use a Clive Woodward saying, you know, teacup thinking clearly under pressure. So things will go wrong, but it's just being saying, well, actually, I've prepared really well. I've done all my detailed planning. I'm now in here, and I can I can deliver under pressure. And I think that's a bit, there's a big difference between doing things, but then doing things under pressure. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, so. And it's interesting. I always have these debates with 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 the, with the FA about why we lose so many tournaments on penalties. And if you go to most football training grounds, how many times do they actually practice penalties under pressure? Mm -hmm. and, th and there's a big difference between putting the ball in the back of a net with, with no people and with 60,000 people booing you. Yeah. And I think it's just yeah. visualising all those things. And I think Johnny Wilkinson was brilliant at that. And actually when it came down to it, when he had to drop the goal to win the Rugby World Cup, he'd done it so many times that... It was no big yeah. deal to him. Yeah. And it's, 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 a, it's the same in business life as well. Yeah. So performing under pressure. I mean, it, the thing that really stands out is when I'm talking to all these performers and people that I've worked with, you know, elite performers that I've worked with for a long time, that preparation is, is key. Because if you don't do that preparation, you've always got that element of doubt. No matter how much preparation you do, though, like you said, something always goes wrong. Mm. But being able to turn it around quickly, I think, is also really important. And that's what makes brilliant people stand out. You can't prepare for everything. No. You can do the best you possibly can. But, um, you know, how do you, how do you ride those waves? You know, wave, I always think it, that success comes in waves. And mm. you're not always on the, the, the tip, uh, uh, you know, at the top of the mountain all the time. What do you do when you're not feeling like everything's going great, but you still have to perform, you still have to do your job? I mean, particularly in sport, because I was saying in, 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 in any job in sport, the highs are very high and yeah. the lows are very low yeah. because it's about winning or, or losing. So, you know, a few weeks back, we beat Slovakia in the Davis Cup and it was fantastic and we lost to Belgium. And, it was a, and, and I always think um, the best bit of advice I was given was actually don't get too overexcited when things are going really well, just keep a keep mm -hmm. a measured, calm approach. And likewise, don't get too down when things aren't going according to plan. And yeah. I think if you can keep that even keel, which is very difficult in sport when everyone wants instant results. Yeah. You know, if you're a football premiership manager now, you know, if you lose three games, you're under pressure from the media, the fans, they want to set you and so on. Yet three games later you could be a hero as well. So I think it's you can only control the things you can control and and particularly in British sport where the media drives a lot of attention 
you know, I, I think a lot of the people I talk to actually don't read the news. You know, it's, a, it's about blanking out some of those things yeah. that can, this is a bit like pouring poison into your head sometimes. And particularly in today's world where it's 24 7 media, it's social media, people are twittering about things, Facebook, mm. everyone has an opinion, have, everyone has a view. And particularly in sport, everyone has an opinion, everyone has a view. So I think it's just saying, look, we can only control the things we can control. If we do the basic things well, if we plan well, if we prepare well, then all we can do is then go out and, and do the best we can, whether that's doing a commercial deal or running a major event or or, or doing a great community program. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right on uh, on all of those things because that's, you know, that's why you fall into the brilliant list. But what is it that, um, would you say, other brilliant people do? Have you learned... Have you learned from other other people that you consider mentors? Have you learned a lot of this yourself? But you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm always, you know, people who say, oh, you know, we don't have any learning and development. I mean, it, it's your responsibility to actually take control of your own learning and development. Yeah. And I'm always interested, because I'm interested in, in sport and business and change. I'm always picking people's brains, you know, so whether it's in sport, People like Dave Brailsford in cycling, Clive Woodward, um, in business, just thinking at Sainsbury's. Um, I've developed quite a close link with Dr. Ulrich Bez, who's the chief executive of Eston Martin, for example. Mm -hmm. But understanding how they run their businesses mm -hmm. and the challenges they face. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's quite nice because they learn, you know, the nice thing about working in sport is people are genuinely interested in, in, in sport. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of the principles are very similar so yeah. you know when I talk to these people you know there's, there's normally three or four or five key themes you know most of the best leaders are very high in vision so they're very and simplicity they've, they've got a very simple vision about what they want to achieve and mm -hmm. um, most of them excel in planning most of them um, actually you know the preparation the attention to detail is superb but also their execution is very good as well mm -hmm. so they absolutely execute all of their vision and their detail planning really well mm -hmm. so a lot of principles whether you're in business and sport are are, are, are very similar and uh, I think sports learn a lot from business but I think business is now learning a lot from sport as well and mm -hmm. yeah we, we, we try here to surround ourselves with brilliant people you know we have sports nutritionists sports psychologists we have um, um, strength and conditioning managers and as a as a business leader it's no different than being an athlete you know you still need your team around you you still need yeah. your, your, your business coach or your your, your pe and, and we try to apply the same principles we would to say an Andy Murray yeah. to our own management team here so do you think it's helped you um Ever since the days of when we played tennis, of course, that was a highlight of your career, I'm sure, when uh, we played when we were at Win Stanley College. But do you think it's really helped you, yourself, having been an athlete? You're not just in sport, you have experienced high-level sport yourself. Yeah, and, and, and in fact, a lot of my sort of early learnings were from my tennis coaches or my rugby coaches. You know, you learn, you learn different things from different people. Yeah. Um, so, and I, and I think it's also the life experiences as well. You know, I, I, I think when you're involved in sport, as much as you know, I went to Loughborough University and I got a degree and so on, I, you know, I often say to people, I, I sort of went from to the University of Life um, and coming from where we came from, sort of Wigan and Scammersdale and so on, you, you grow up very quickly. Yeah. Um, but, but a bit like you, you know, you aspire to do other things and get out. And sport was actually a big vehicle for me to sort of get out of that environment and, and, and sort of do bigger and better things. But, you know, I, I still, you know, whether it's your parents or whether it's your sports coach or whether it was the head of PE at Winston, they all help you along the way and you all learn different things from them. Yeah, absolutely. I would hope so. And, and I think also, you know, in my two sports, in tennis, and rugby, tennis is quite an individual sport, mm. um, whereas rugby's more of a team sport. And, you know, you learn to cope for yourself on the tennis court because you have to work things through it. But equally, I think it's really important being part of a team and the discipline that that brings you as well. Yeah. Well, you know what? I could talk for flipping ages about all of these things, but uh, I know you're a very busy, busy person. Um, what would you... Let's, let's just wrap up with asking you, what would you say was, you know, a 
few top tips for anybody wanting to do well in business. You know, say they already have the motivation to do well and hopefully they work, want to work hard. You got any top tips that you would give somebody watching these WeChats? Well, I think you've got to be really passionate about what you do. So before you do anything in, in, in your working life, I think you've got to be passionate about it. Because if you're not emotionally committed to tennis or sports psychology, I don't think, you know, I think a big part of it is, 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 is enjoying what you do. So I think being passionate and emotionally committed is a big thing. I think two, surround yourself with uh, people who are better than you are and, and even more brilliant people than you are who make mm. you look good. Um, and we've got a fantastic team here um, at leadership level and at management level as well. And we work, you know, we do a lot of work together because you know you you can be skilled in certain areas, but you need other skills, whether that's finance or legal or mm. commercial or HR and so on. And I think the the other thing that's always stood me in good stead is always sort of surround yourself with people who share your passion and who are positive, mm -hmm. and don't really spend too much time with people who are the sort of energy zappers, who yeah. you know are always critical. Of course, you know you things go wrong and you've got to learn from that but I, I just surround yourself with people who share your passion share your commitment and who want to make a real difference mm -hmm. and and it's funny anything in life it you know a lot of the big changes in life came around from a few people getting together and having a very clear vision and, and cracking on with it so I, I think a lot of the things that I've learned are more around people emotional behavior relationships and often in business life when things go wrong is when the relationships go wrong as mm -hmm. well. And you can have the best spreadsheets and the best finance plans and the best corporate governance, but often it's about people and just you know making sure that you have a lot of good people around you who, who share that passion. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Well said. Do you mind if I ask you a few final no. quick fire away. questions? All right, and so uh, I have them pre-prepared. I'm always asking this uh, first one of everybody. Okay, so if you knew you couldn't fail, what would you try to do tomorrow? Um, I would uh, I'd probably think about going back and, and doing things differently with, with tennis because it would be nice to be Wimbledon champion. <laughs> so I'd have worked a lot harder <laughs> on the tennis court and uh, if I knew I was going to be Wimbledon champion, I'd have applied myself much better. All right, then. I knew you should have listened to me on the court. That's what it was. Um, what culture outside your own interests you the most? Um, well, I, I think it's interesting. I think it's the, the areas I'm really interested in are what people want to do more. So obviously I'm interested in sport, but you know, music, travel, mm. um, you know, retail model. I'm I'm always interested in. And, you know, we're, we're in a sector that actually, if you ask most people, they they want to do more sport. They want to listen to music. They want to travel around the world, and yeah. they want to shop. So. I'm, I'm always interested in those different sort of sectors and, and sort of different sort of cultures as well. But but I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm learning a lot. For example, we've, we've got some quite close links with the Brazilian Tennis Federation. Mm. And the culture in Brazil at the moment is really changing. Mm -hmm. And there's some really happening. You know, people talk about India and China and so on. But I think, I think what's going down in Brazil is really sort of interesting in the way people are working and the way people are doing things and you can see why it's one of the emerging nations. Getting ready for the World Cup and the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, you know, and again, using sport as a vehicle yeah. to sort of change the, the, their way of life as well. So yeah, I think, I think you can always learn from other sectors, but you, you're always learning from different cultures as well. Mm -hmm. And you know, and that, that's the great thing about working in the global sport. You know, I get to meet the guys from Kazakhstan, where the culture's different from Brazil, where it's different from Thailand, and and obviously then you've got the, the you know the, the Grand Slam nations like the French and the Aussies and the Americans, and it's all very different, and the world's breaking down rapidly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's uh, that diversity is important, I think. Um, what period in history would you most like to live in? Um, I, I think I, I, I like living in the period we're living in at the moment. I like think it's a great, yeah, because I think things are changing so rapidly with te particularly technology. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm really interested in how technology is just changing the way we do things constantly. And, uh, you know, we were just talking about 
sort of the eighties when we were at school, and you probably had cassettes, and then they went out, and there was CDs, CDs. and then they went out, and now Apple are transforming things, and then something will out, something else will come along as well. So, yeah. I know a lot of people moan and whinge about, oh, it's this and that, and society and so on, but actually, um, I think it's a really exciting time to be to be in the world right now. I like that answer. Um, chocolate or vanilla? Uh, chocolate. Uh, dog or cat? Dog. Do you have one? No. But if you did, what would you have? Big uh, or small? Labrador. Labrador. Ooh, chocolate or vanilla? Uh, <laughs> vanilla. Golden. <laughs> Golden Labrador. Golden. Very nice. Well, it has been a pure pleasure. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks Thank you. for. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much for being one of the uh, people on the Brilliant List. Tune in next time to see who we have on uh, the Brilliant List of people for the WeChats. Thank you very much, Thank Roger. You. Thanks a lot.